Okay, so we are live. Okay. Um, we're doing the su Success Bombardment Synchronous Online Team Experience. Um, I'll start with the step-by-step -step instructions. So step one, individual success analysis. Um, so take 15 minutes. Greet each other as team members and make sure everyone is ready to proceed. Read the following activity introduction and allow time for each individual to complete on their own. Step one on the SP 105 success analysis worksheet. So for healthy personal and team development to occur, it is essential for team members to be able to deal effectively with their own positive strengths and successes as well as those of others. Perceived weaknesses and failures are often allowed to be so influential that they can dominate a person's self-image. Inputs from one's social environment frequently reinforce the negative. To, to counter this and develop a team's positive environment, this exercise is designed to provide opportunity for each team member to describe his or her success in life, big or small, and to receive positive feedback on how others in their team view these success successes. Now in the first step, each team member is to fill out the entire success analysis worksheet, which is this one, it's all the squares. The purpose of the worksheet is to assist each team member in organizing a five minute oral presentation to be given to their teammates that describes the successes he or she personally has experienced or anticipate experiencing and the reasons why each was viewed as a success. Allow 12 to 15 minutes for worksheet completion. Holy cow. Okay, okay. so you just fill out this worksheet. Yep. Okay. So I wonder if success one through three, can we use one of those as our most successful or that has to be maybe something different? I think it has to be something different um, probably okay but yeah. so are these like just any sort of success that we've had or i think so and then it can also be future like something you're you think you're going to be successful at i think as well yep so describe his or her success in life big or small so it, i think any success not like the top three or i mean obviously the most successful right. most successful but Well, my computer is being silly, so let me just go get a new piece of paper.
I feel like I'm overthinking what like type of success, like what kind of, I guess, examples are you guys doing? Are you doing like getting a job? Are you like getting into Mercy? What kind of things are you? I think those are both good examples. Like I'm using like, um, like a future one, like graduating with my BSN next year, you know, or like other ones, just basic ones of like motherhood to me, that's Mm -hmm. their marriage or, you know, um, passing a test with coming up or they don't even have to be huge. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to be like way on one end of the spectrum. Uh, I think you're fine. I'm done whenever you guys are. Give me a couple more minutes. No rush. What was that? I have no idea. <laughs> that sound? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was my computer. Somebody said, oh. did I have my text, my computer set up to receive text messages too? I need to. Oh, mine does that too. There.
Do you guys know if we are supposed to fill out these listening rubrics for each other? Because it says name of teammate being scored. Or is that something he fills out when he watches this? Oh, I don't know. My uh, you know what I mean? I, don't. I mean, we could fill it out and then, I mean, it probably wouldn't hurt. I guess he'll let us know, too, if we don't. But. Is there a drop box for it? I don't know. I'll have to look. I only printed off one because I didn't realize yeah, that. I. But I just saw the name thing on it, so. Yeah, it looks like we're supposed to fill it out. Okay, I'm on the last one. Okay, like two minutes. doesn't look like there's a drop box for it. Yeah. I just remember in the weekly thing, it says we'll be graded on our listening skills. Mm -hmm. So maybe he just uses it. Maybe it's a yeah. thing that we can look at to, like, gauge how we listen, basically. <laughs> maybe we're supposed to use some of that information to write the reflection. Maybe, yeah. All right, I'm done. Okay. All right, let me find the instructions, even though I think I know what we're supposed to do. All right, once every team member is finished filling out their worksheet, that each member gives his or her five-minute presentation to their teammates, beginning with the person whose birthday is nearest to today's date. As each member talks, the other team members are to quietly and intently listen for the speaker's strengths, gifts, skills, and abilities. When listeners identify a speaker's strengths, gifts, skills, abilities, etc., such as caring, honest, responsible, hardworking, they are to jot these down in order to be recalled and shared with the speaker once his or her presentation is finished. It is right. essential that participants listen for a speaker's strengths, gifts, skills, abilities, instead of thinking about what they are going to say when it is their turn. After the presentation is complete, each team member one by one takes turns sharing with the presenter the various strengths, gifts, skills, abilities that he or she has noted. Once every team member has shared the, with the presenter, then another teammate makes his or her presentation. Okay, do we have a like a list of things that we like can pull from or is it just like, okay, Darren, you are like a caring mom and you're hardworking, that kind of stuff? I think so, yeah. Yep. There's no examples. It's just I think, what you're okay. hearing when the other person, what they're saying. Do we okay. get the feedback after each person or at the very end after we all go? Um, after each person. Okay. okay. Okay, so my birthday is November 20th. When's yours? April 15th. Okay, mine's April 19th. So Kelsey goes first. Oh, I do? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I do? <laughs> that's close to today? Even though it's bad, even though it's... Right, that's true. Okay. So my first success I had was... Um, one that will happen later, and that's graduating with my BSN in August of next year. Uh, the reasons why I think I, what made me successful is like my hard work to school, my dedication, my time management, um, and then of course support from my husband. Like I don't think it's something I would be able to be successful with all on my own at this point in my life. Um, my second success is. Um, returning to school, like taking that step to go back to school, which took me a long time um, because I was, I needed to get over my fears. So that was part of the reason why I was successful with that was just getting over like, can I do it with kids? Can I do it? Am I smart enough? You know, is this a good idea? Um, I also did it for my kids. They were part of the reason I was successful was because I wanted them to see me be successful and know that they are also able to be successful. Um, 
My success number three is being married for 10 years because I think, especially in today's society, that takes a lot of hard work and dedication and teamwork. Like it's not something that is easy anymore. I feel like it's definitely not easy every day. So um, I think just devotion and hard work and remembering we're a team is why I've been successful with that, not giving up when things have been really hard. Um, by far, my most successful experience, though, has been motherhood. I started very young at like 21, you know, becoming a mom. So, um, again, dedication, caring, hard work, not giving up when it's been rough, which with motherhood, you can't really just give up, you know that, Darren, but some days you want to. And then also, you know, the teamwork with my husband. Like, again, I don't know how single parents do it because I could not do that, mm -hmm. I don't think. Um, one success during the fast last few weeks. Um, yesterday I had Mercy has these um, HESI tests now. I don't know if you have to do them or not, Darren, but every semester you have to take these HESI tests that are specialized. I had a pharmacology one yesterday. Um, a lot of people in my cohort did not pass it. You have to get 850. I got in the thousands somehow. Oh. And I passed it. Yeah. So. Um, the reasons why I was successful on that, I think a lot of it was luck, to be completely honest. I'm a good guesser with tests sometimes. <laughs> but also, I think I did probably study more than other people. I like looked for different study methods online. I Googled things, trying to figure out what to expect with the test. Um, and then an anticipated success in the next few weeks would just be passing another semester of the BSN program and being that much closer to graduation. Nice. Um, how old are you, Kelsey? 31. 31. So mm -hmm. I was like, gosh. Sorry, complete side note, but just related. I feel like it's kind of hard to gauge people's age now. I love young too. Because, like, at work, I get a lot of people that are like, you're only 21? Like, mm -hmm. they go, I thought you were a mom, or I thought you were 26 or 27. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not upset about that, but. Whoa. I get the opposite. I get like, aren't you like 18? I'm like, no. Yes. <laughs> People think I'm like my kid's nanny. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> well, I can start since I, yeah. So I pulled out that you are, I'll list them off and then I'll explain. So driven, Um, you can accept help from others, which I think is super important. Um, you can overcome your fears, which is, I know, very hard, especially, like, in my personal experience. Um, you're committed and you're a hard worker and, like, just studying in general. I think a lot of people tend to put off studying because there's other things that they can be doing and it's just easier to do those other things than to actually sit down and study and do it. I know I find myself doing that sometimes where I'm like, oh, but I have to get this work project done. I have to do this. I have to do that. And it's like, okay, no, like this is my work too. So, um, and I think as far as like accepting help from others, I think that that's super important because you can't do everything on your own, even though I think a lot of women like to do things on their own. Mm -hmm. It's, I think it's important to accept help, whether it's like emotional help or, like even just physical help, like, okay, hey, can you help me bring in these groceries? Or hey, can you like help me study for this test or whatever else? So that, that is what I pulled from that. Good job on the HESI though. Thanks. Have That's, you taken any of them yet? Yeah, we did two of them. We did one in holistic and we did one in fundamentals. The one in fundamentals, I got a 1071. Yeah, and good for you. In holistic, I got like a 618, but yeah. a lot of it is stuff that we like hadn't covered yet. Yeah, you'll and do better on the next one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm open so. Yeah, you so, will. Like ATI test, do you guys do ATI anymore? Mm -mm. No, it might be what something similar, but these are like standardized. They're supposed to prepare us for the NCLEX and give us an, a, a decent idea of where we're at they're actually in some schools called exit exams because they're set up for students at the end of the program so it's really hard to be successful in them because a lot of us are first second third semester nursing students
students and we have zero nursing knowledge, but I think it's honestly more of an assessment tool for the college than it is beneficial for us, but. That sounds similar to what we did. Like yeah. The eye test, I think is. Yeah. Okay, so what I pulled from your um, list of successes, Kelsey, was your dedication to school, um, not only in your presentation just now, but through um, just talking with you in our last Google Hangout, um, I can tell that you're very dedicated to school and to to doing well in school, not just finishing it, but to to be able to do it well. Um, and then how you talked about your strength to return to school, um, I think I can relate to that because it's not something that I wanted to do. Um, and so I know that was probably a really hard decision for you. Um, and you talked about getting over your fears of going back to school. Um, and I think that I know that that was a really big decision. Um, and then your teamwork in your marriage. Um, I think, like you said, in today's society, it's really easy to just go up and say, you know what, I'm done. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that your teamwork that you're exhibiting in your marriage, you can carry over to other aspects of your life. Um, and then what stood out to me about your HESI test, um, I would, thought it was awesome that you're very proud of it. Um, but you did downplay it a little bit, which I think is kind of what this exercise is saying. Like, oh yeah, some of it was guessing and trying to not be as proud of yourself as you really should be because that's a big accomplishment and you did do well on it. Um, and it probably wasn't luck, truthfully. So very good job on it. I do do that. And I think it, it's hard too because so many people didn't do well. So then I feel really guilty because, you know, you're all asking each other. Yeah. And it, I do that with a lot of things. Like people are like, oh, what'd you get on a test? I'm like, an A. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, oh, because it's like you feel bad. It's like yeah. I'm, I think it's human nature, and I think I think it's more common for women to do too, for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Um, like both of you, especially like I'm in farm right now too. Sorry, hold on, my cat keeps. Um, yeah, so I'm in farm right now, and a lot of people, and even in patho last semester, a lot of people are like really struggling in these classes and. At least for me, this stuff is stuff that I'm interested in. So it's easier for me to study. It, it just makes more sense to me. And like, we'll take these quizzes. Like on the last test, I think I got a 96%. On this last quiz, I got 100%. And so I, I kind of avoid like talking to people about scores or just I'll be like, okay, what do you feel about this question? Instead of like, oh, what'd you get? Only because I'm like, okay. This is stuff that I like really studied for and I just really understand. And I with, agree with you, Kelsey. It's like, okay, I don't like when telling people, okay, I got an A or I like got 100% and they're like, oh, I got a 60% or I did whatever. So, well, because I know what it's like to struggle too. Like when we took our math HESI, I got like 230 because yeah. I am terrible at math. I, they didn't teach us. It was dosage calculations and it was embarrassing. It was hard to hear people talk about their awesome scores when you didn't do so well. So like, I also know what it feels like on the other side of that too. So there's that. I agree. Um, so who wants to go next? Is it the next closest birthday? I think so. Yep. Okay. So that is me. All right. So the first one, um, this was, I got my first job as a server and I had no prior experience. So I had, um, been in, I worked at customer service at Hy-Vee for three years. And then I worked at, um, a coffee shop as a barista, well, two different coffee shops, but mainly one, um, for a little under three years. So I'd had a lot of like regular customer experience, but not like serving experience. And so when I did get my first job as a server and I was like excelling at it, it felt good because I was like, okay, well, I have friends and even like the coworkers that I had that like, okay, you've been doing this for a really long time. And I don't know, maybe it's just me being a perfectionist, but I like to be good at the things that I do. And if I'm not good at it, it's like, okay, well, let me, let me find things that I can do better at. So my reasons would be I feel like I'm personable and then good customer service just overall because I've had so much of it. And then I guess my willingness to learn. I'm for the most part pretty good. I feel like about asking questions if I need help or like 
doing it myself and figuring it out myself so I can be successful because I don't like feeling I don't like when people are upset with me. <laughs> um, for number two, uh, working as a manager while I'm taking 17 credit hours this summer um, is exhausting, but I think my time management skills really help with that. Um, and then just trying to get sleep <laughs> because closing and then getting up in the morning for class is exhausting. Um, number three, uh, just keeping a job in general while going to school, not even necessarily just managing, but, um, my parents always kind of pushed me to have a job. They always thought it was important, even if it was just part-time to like build up those time management skills. Um, so then the reasons for that would be support from my family, first of all. Um, and then just my drive to work. I don't, if I didn't work, I would be bored. I think, I mean, even with all the school stuff, it's like, okay, I can get that done at least with working. I say, okay, I have all this homework and I have to work at five. Let's get this done. So then I can do whatever I want to before work and then go to work. Mm -hmm. um, my most successful decision probably would be making the decision to transfer from Nebraska to Mercy and leave all of my friends, which was super hard because I'd been there my fir my freshman and sophomore year of college. So all of my friends were there. Um, and I'm originally from like the Des Moines area. So it was hard for me to, like I didn't like anybody that I graduated high school with just because I felt like they were all just very like self-centered and I'm a very giving person. Um, so it was hard to make that decision, but I know that it was right because I wouldn't have been as successful at Nebraska in the nursing program, I think as I am here. Um, so those reasons, um, I felt like I was making the best decision for my future. So like the decisiveness, which I'm not normally a decisive person. Um, and then my, um, getting support from my family and friends and then just my drive to do better and to better myself. Cause at Nebraska, not that it's a big party school, but everybody's always like, let's go out, let's do this, let's do that. And at least being here, I can say, a lot of people are like, hey, let's study, let's go like get together and do things and related to school versus just like going out and drinking. Mm -hmm. um, the one success within the last like what was it week, right? Um, so I went on a first date again. I had been with my previous boyfriend for about a year and a half, and it just wasn't, I guess it could tie in, I guess, to this, but it just I was working so much, I just wasn't being able to spend enough time with him and I wasn't able to, I feel like it sounds silly, but everybody's like, oh, you don't just fall out of love, which I think is false. I think that you do sometimes you just, it just, you don't feel the same. And I didn't feel like it was fair to like drag him along under that. Um, so as far as the reasons, again, time management, just cause like I work with him. So it's easy to make time outside of work because our schedule's kind of aligned um and then just being able to be personable and connect with somebody after that I feel like sometimes it's hard after like a breakup or doing whatever to get back out into that mm -hmm. um and then an anticipated one was like yours Kelsey was just being done with summer class um and being closer to graduating recent well four semesters left after that um, so then reasons were time management again, um, making time like it's summer. I feel like you can't just be cooped up inside doing all of those things. So going outside and making time for fun and for friends and realizing that, okay, even though you are in nursing school, you can still have a life. You can still do things outside of, outside of school, mm -hmm. but so yeah. Nice. Okay. Nice. I know this is know this professional. professional. Are, but I have to plug my computer in, so give me like 20 seconds to run out and get my cord, okay? Okay. Don't talk. Don't talk. <laughs> yeah, no, Kelsey, I totally, going back to the HESI, that, and even, so like when I got the 1071 on the fundamentals one for foundations two, and then I got the 618, I felt like I was, like, I was upset with myself, too, because I was like, okay, well, I'm very much a perfectionist. So for me, it's like, okay, I got a 1071 on this first one. Why couldn't I have gotten close yeah. to that 
on this other it one. It's really discouraging for people, you know, and I see that a lot in my classmates that aren't doing well on all of them. I mean, I think on the fundamentals one, my first one, I got like, I passed it. It was like 901. Mm -hmm. And then on my second one, I got like in the thousands, you know, so I sometimes I'm like, it might just depend on your day, your mood. Like, right. did I drink too much coffee beforehand and I was anxious, you know? Um, so I see how discouraging it is to some of my classmates and they're like, should I even keep doing this? Should I even stay in nursing school? And I'm like, okay, you cannot base how good of a nurse you're going to be on these stupid standardized tests, you know, like that. No, some people just don't test well. Like some people are excellent nurses and don't test well. Like don't throw out your career because of these stinking tests, you know? Okay, I'm back. Okay, Sydney, so I'll go first with your feedback. Um, I think getting your first job as a server is like an excellent example. I think anytime you branch out and do something unfamiliar and new, like it takes a lot of bravery, you know, kind of like how Darren and I talked about going back to school. It's like you have to get over a lot of your own personal fears of can I do this? Will I be good enough for it? Um, and I can see like when you talk about a lot of different things that you like to work to be the best that you can be, like you said, like you just really um, thrive on um, learning more, doing more, like not just doing it, but doing it the best that you can. And I think that's just really good quality. Um, with and you're working and going to school, I, like, I think that's absolutely amazing. Like I had to cut down my work to like very part time. The fact that you're taking 17 credit hours and working as much as you are and um, being a manager, like I, I kind of think you're actually a little bit crazy maybe in a good way <laughs> um, because that takes a lot of work ethic and a lot of dedication. And that's really impressive. Like I'm assuming you're a little bit younger than me. Um, and I feel like nowadays that, uh oh, Sydney just texted me. She's frozen. No. Oh, she's not on anymore. How do we fix that? Um, let me re invite her. <laughs> I thought maybe she just wasn't responding to <laughs> her feedback. Sorry, that's me texting. I shut my text off, apparently not. It was going so well, too. I know. <laughs> it was all because I had to stop for my computer. Okay. <clears throat> okay, she's back. Maybe. Hello? Do you see that picture in the bottom? Yeah. Is that her? Yeah, but it, it's like a professional headshot. I know. <laughs> Can she just hear us? It's like her, right? Sydney? Can you hear us, Sydney? Well, there you are. Hey, can you hear us? Sydney? Uh oh. You're really breaking out. Can you guys hear me? I am. Kind of, but you're really breaking okay, out. Yeah, I am. I don't know what happened. I think but uh -oh. you're really pixelated can you like connect to the your phone's internet or something guess what okay. i had um well like hot spot it because i can't hear you very well Or can you switch to just um, audio maybe for a little bit? Or just use your phone. 
I'm the okay. only one left, so it shouldn't take too much longer. Yeah. Uh oh, she's frozen again. Usually it's my internet that acts up. <laughs> so I live out in the country and we have terrible internet. Oh man, that's a horrible picture of me that he's frozen on. <laughs> Maybe I'll just type her feedback over here in the side thing. Oops, she, she says, give me two minutes. Oh, I guess you're getting the text messages too. should probably figure out how to shut the sound off of it so we can treat this like an actual class because I wouldn't have my ringer on in class. Kelsey, how old are your kids? Nine, eight, and five. Okay. Yeah, my two older girls are 14 months apart. So. <laughs> You're a little crazy, too. Yeah. What about yours? Uh, Four, two, and four months. Yeah. I love it, though. Like, I love having my girls close together. So were you like legit crazy for a while? Cause that's how I feel right now. Like, well, I stayed at home. I worked like part-time on the weekends always, but like I was able to stay at home pretty much all, you know, full time, not really worry too much about a career or school uh -huh. to me when they were younger it was actually easier. I don't know why. Like, yeah, yeah, I was crazy and miserable most days, but <laughs> it's almost harder now cause they fight all the time. They're just at each other's throats, uh -huh. you know? And it stresses me out a lot. I'm like, I just need you all to quit talking. Just go away. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my middle was a preemie. So like I was bringing home a preemie from the hospital on an apnea monitor when my oldest was like, uh -huh. I don't even know. Not even. Eight years old. Sorry. We were just chatting. No, that's You're okay. Okay. Sorry. So I'll finish with your feedback. I typed a few things in cause I didn't know if we were going to see you again or not, but, okay. uh, how old are you? 21. I just turned 21. 21. Okay. That's what I thought. So I think your worth ethic for 21 is like outstanding. There's not a lot of, I sound really old saying this, but there's not a lot of kids these days. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like all these kids are like, oh my gosh, I had to work for like an hour this week. And I'm like, oh, for you. literally you know? all of my employees. Yeah. And like mom and dad still pays all their bills. And so I think it's like amazing when I see kids like, for the most part, pulling their own weight or at least working, like do something with yourself. And as much as you're working and your dedication to school, like I think that's amazing. Um, and then transferring to a school you're unfamiliar with, like that's definitely stepping out of your comfort zone, which I feel like you're maybe an outgoing person, but I feel like even for those who are outgoing, like that's still a really uncomfortable situation. And you feel like you're taking a huge, you know, leap of faith when you do that and hope that it all works out. So that shows a lot of bravery and just looking out for your future at your age. Like most kids at 21, they don't care what's going to happen in the next 10 years. They don't, they can't even like, they don't care what's going to happen tomorrow. So the mm -hmm. fact that you were able to say, okay, this is a better choice for me, even though it's uncomfortable. Like I think it's really cool. And then your devotion to self-care, like reaching out and dating again, like that's hard, even at 21. Like I couldn't do that again at 31, let alone 21. Like, <laughs> so, you know, I think you're kind of saying, yes, I'm in school. Yes, I'm working a lot, but it's important for me to also like have a personal life. So I think that is outstanding. I, like, I didn't think of that, but I like that. 
Um, okay, so Sydney, I um, what I jotted down your um, the first thing you said was that you acknowledged that you're excelling at your job, which I think is important. Um, again, kind of I think what this exercise is pointing out is um, for you to really notice your strengths, and I think that not only that you can acknowledge that yes, I'm doing I'm doing a good job at my job, but also to portray that to us. Um, Shows that you're a very strong person. Um, and then you said that you have um, good customer service skills, which I think in this day and age, it's easy for people to place the blame on others. And um, so customer service skills in general are hard for people to cultivate and hard for you to, um, hard for you to learn. I think a lot of people don't, don't have those anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then kind of what Kelsey touched on, your time management with work and school. Um, working in general while going to nursing school is really hard. So um, I worked very, very part-time going to nursing school because not only nursing school, but Mercy Nursing School, I feel like, is very challenging. Um, sorry if that's my computer still being. I think it's mine this time. Um, but I think um, to be 21 and to have those time management skills where you can say, you know, I can devote this much time to my job a week, but I am also taking 17 credits a semester. So this is what I need for my homework. This is what I need for my self care. So going on a date um, and really knowing what you need um, in all those areas of your life is important. And then your drive to work again, kind of what Kelsey talked about. Um, it's easy to sit back and say, you know what, I'm going to nursing school, so I can't work or so I can't be a manager. I only have three minutes a, a week to dedicate to work so it's not even worth it um so i think just your internal drive to work um is really unique about you because it is easy to to come up with an excuse not to um and then i wrote your decisiveness to change schools because it would be easy to sit back and just continue doing what you were doing um, but somewhere along the line you decided to make that decision that this would be a better route for you so i think that was very strong of you well, thanks. All right. Darren, your turn. Okay. Last one. So my success number one is graduating college. Um, previous to going to Mercy, I went to Simpson, Col Simpson College and um, got bachelor's degrees in marketing and psychology. And then I have graduated from Mercy in 2010 with my associate's degree. Um, the reasons why that I think that that's successful is my parents both didn't graduate college. Um, and me being the oldest sibling, I was kind of, I didn't feel it at the time, but I was setting the precedent for my siblings um, that we as a family or we as siblings are going to go to college or we are going to go do something with our life and make something of ourselves. Um, and then just graduating from Simpson with a double major degree was really important to me because um, I feel like that was a big accomplishment that I could have just on one path or the other, um, which most people do, but I chose to do a double major. Um, my success number two is I have a um, multi-level marketing business, um, and so my promotions to Diamond, Double Diamond, and Triple Diamond were very important to me. Um, the reasons why those were important is money isn't everything, but my paychecks that I got with those were um, upwards of Two thousand, six thousand, eleven thousand dollars a month, and so the, that really helped provide for um, our family in areas and gaps where um, to provide things that we weren't able to do before. Um, I paid off my student loans in six months. We were able to um, save money, sell our house, build a new house. Um, it was a lot of work, but I was a leader of a very large, or am a leader of a very large team, and um, I think that really helped build a lot of the leadership skills that I have. Um, my success number three is my marriage, um, and I think Kelsey really touched on most of what I wrote down, but um, I'll reiterate it, is that I think it's successful because a lot of marriages fail in this day and age, and people aren't as committed to trying to make it work. Um, and Sydney, I not, I don't want to say mm. I'm not saying this in front of you, but I think that um, you get married and everybody's in love and not that you, not that you don't love that person anymore, but I think it's, you have to make a, an awareness or a decision to 
stick together through the hard times and make it work, even though it sucks sometimes and um, not just throw in the towel. And I think it's, I think it's a decision Mm -hmm. um, to stay together and to work together and not give up. Um, My husband and I have been through a lot of changes in the last couple of years, just with, um, you know, selling our house, building a house, things not going as they should have. Um, Our surprise third um, baby baby when we were while we were building a house um he recently just switched jobs kind of up and out of the blue after he'd been a police officer in newton for 10 years um so just a lot of changes in a short amount of time and we really had to sit down and have that conversation that this all really sucks right now and it'd be a lot easier just to give up and not have to worry about our marriage anymore um but let's work together instead of working against each other so that's why i think that's important um And then my most successful experience, um, being a mom to three kids, um, why I think that's successful. My children are happy, healthy, smart, and we're providing the best life we can for them. Um, I I think that really speaks for itself. Um, again, you know, three kids are four and under, they're wild and crazy and they're all very needy. Um, so it'd be easy to sit back and not give up, but um, just kind of take the easier out and let them run wild and do whatever they want. But we're really trying to, you know, give them morals and values. And um, that's why I think that's important. And then one success during the past few weeks, I know I, um, you both kind of know about this because we were supposed to have our meeting last night, but I wrote um, my board meeting investigation and decision on um, what to do with the in- individuals um, involved in um, the situation that happened at our daycare. Um, and I don't know if he actually watches this whole thing or if I need to explain, but our daycare and our preschool, um, I'm on the board committee. So they lost a child and then tried to cover it up. Um, so the board had to make a decision what to do with the individuals involved. Um, and I thought that that was important because, um, it was a very lengthy discussion and investigation. Um, it was a very emotional thing because we're a very small town. And so not only are these people, um, child care providers, but there's a lot of relationships and friendships in there too. Um, but we came to a decision as a board that everybody um, agreed upon and thought was fair. So I thought it was a, a, a big success because um, we entered that meeting with a lot of mixed emotions and um, decisions about what should be done. And then one anticipated success in the next few weeks, I thought this was very interesting that all three of us put completing mm-hmm. summer 2018 courses. Um, and I put that I wanted to be on the president's list because I have been the last couple of semesters. And so I'm really making that a goal again for this semester because I feel like it's attainable. So, but I thought that was interesting that all three of us put that. That's awesome. <laughs> Small steps, right? Yes. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll go first here. Um, so your first one about getting your double major, like I think that's amazing and it kind of hits close to home for me too because I'm the oldest in a big family. My parents didn't go to college. They scraped by to try to just keep a roof over our heads growing up. So I love that you took that experience and you turned it into something healthy for yourself instead of being like, you know, a lot of people would kind of dwell on that. You know, it's fine. I survived, you know, we can live like this. I think that's really cool that you took that and you grew from it because a lot of people I don't think would take that as a positive experience and a learning experience and to do something about it to change and make your life better. Mm -hmm. Um, And your siblings' lives. Uh, Your MLM business, I think that's cool that you reached out and tried something that maybe at the time felt kind of unsure. Like, you know, sometimes with those, you're like, is this going to be successful? Um, what are other people going to think of me? Is this going to be good for my family in the long run? Is it going to just add more stress to my life? And you still reached out and you tried something unknown and you succeeded with it. So that's a great example for a lot of people to say, you know, yeah, it seems a little unsure in the beginning, but look at what could come from it. Mm-hmm. Um, Marriage, I'm with you on that too. It's really, really hard. It takes a lot of commitment. Um, Not every day is easy. And like you said, I think that people get into it. Like I always say, I think people get married for the wedding and not the marriage, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, It's really, really hard. And people don't realize that, especially when you bring kids into the picture. I think it makes you a stronger person. And the fact that you guys were able to have that conversation and say, this is going to be hard. It is hard. Um, I think that takes a lot of strength. Um, same thing with motherhood, like by far the hardest job ever, you know, like 
people will say, oh my gosh, you're in school and you, you work all these hours. And I'm like, yeah, but mom, being a mom is still like way harder than that. Like that's my break from home. So, um, I think it shows how strong you are, like as a person, the fact that you're doing all this and still doing your best to raise like happy, healthy, well-adjusted children. Because I think a lot of people let their kids kind of fall to the wayside and focus on themselves and say, you know, my career, what's best for me. And the fact that you can look at your kids and still know that they are top priority, no matter what happens, like that's just outstanding. Um, and I think the example with your board meeting and everything that you had to do with that shows a lot of leadership from you because I also am from a small town and it's really difficult when close relationships interfere with um, business and things like that. And you have to make decisions like that. Like that takes a lot of um, leadership qualities. So I'm impressed by that. Thank you. Okay. So starting with your first one, I touched on, um, well, this would be your third major, right? Or your third time in school. Mm -hmm. Well, technically fourth major, but third time in school, which is awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I'd say that you're probably driven and then you're just striving to do better. I mean, and like you had touched on, um, Kelsey, I you could have just like stayed and done whatever, but I think the fact that you're choosing to go back to school and choosing to make that decision for yourself and for your kids and just for your family, I think is super important. Um, your time management, I think is important. And also I feel like just the way that you talk, you enjoy working hard, you enjoy doing the things that you need to and um, that maybe they don't feel like work, but it I think shows. Um, then your leadership too, I think is important as far as um, like with your board meeting yesterday and I think making hard decisions and like working with others to make those decisions is super important because I know in the video we had watched last week for class that it's easy I think for like when we disagree with people and we feel very strongly about like what we think, I think it's easy for people to overpower others and say, okay, well, let's just, just, let's just get this done. This is how I feel and not like truly talk about it. Cause I know there have been times when at least me personally, we've like, I've been in a group setting and I went in feeling one way. We talked it all out, looked at all of the facts and then I like left feeling another way. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's super important that especially like in nursing that you can you can do that you can work with others and have like an actual conversation instead of just like walking all over mm -hmm. um people um and then just your willingness to change and grow with your life and your husband i know that that can be hard and i i can definitely agree obviously I, and I do think that you choose to make it work. And I know that my, like, in my experience breaking up, it was like, okay, I, not that I wasn't choosing him, but I wasn't like, I was like, okay, I have so many other things going on and I wasn't putting in necessarily the effort that I felt like I could have been. But to me, I'm like, you guys, I'm not going to date just, just to date, just to be with somebody. If I'm not happy or I'm not choosing to do that, then I'm not going to. So I think that that's a very strong thing, I guess, of both of you that you can change and grow and work together with your spouse to like make a better life for you and your kids. Um, I think that was lost in my head. Yeah, right. Nice. And don't get me wrong, it still has to be with the right person that you make that decision, so. Right, so. right, absolutely. Okay, so um, as a team, spend some time discussing your reactions and experience. What thoughts and feelings were stimulated by the experience and how did each of you respond to the impact of giving and receiving positive feedback? In some ways, you were giving and receiving gifts. Were you giving and receiving gifts from each other? 
What did it cost you to do so? Why don't we do this more often with the team we are a part of? In what ways was your team's climate, such as trust, support, cohesion, affected by this experience? Share your thoughts as team members about these and about any other reflections you may have as individuals. Um, so I don't know if this is exactly what he means, but we kind of touched on how it was a little bit uncomfortable, I think, to write positive experiences about yourself in general yeah. because um as human beings and i think women do this more often it you don't want to boast and you don't want to um brag or um you know like kelsey was with her hesse test she wanted to kind of downplay it and say i got a good grade but probably it was luck because it's uncomfortable to to talk about your successes for some reason mm -hmm. um I don't, I don't know why that is exactly you guys have yeah. a good insight for that why that why is that uncomfortable i feel like part of it can be at least i know from my personal experience whenever people are like okay what are your what are your greatest strengths what are your weaknesses what are like i could point out my weaknesses all day but i feel like it's i agree darren it's much harder to talk about your successes and talk about what you're good at because i feel like at least for me i feel like you in today's society you'll get judged for anything that you do and i feel like us as women kind of naturally want to not be judged mm -hmm. at, of like about certain things so it's like okay if i don't talk about it then i don't have to be judged or you know what i mean and mm -hmm. i feel like i feel like in any situation whether it's like work or school or family that you should sit down and say okay this is like this is what happened this is this is what i feel like i'm excelling at this is what i wish that i had help on this is and really build a team versus like going doing your job and then being done because i feel like touching on what you said before nowadays nobody wants to work nobody they're just there to get a paycheck they're not there to be a team player they're not there to like better the business, better the team. And I feel like it's hard, I think, sometimes to, it's easy to pick out the bad things about somebody, about the way that somebody's working, about whatever, the way somebody acted or what they said. And it's hard to point out the good things. It's hard to kind of get past that, I think. But I wish that more places like or even that more businesses could do this and have a team building experience instead of just being like okay you suck or you need to do this better or and even as like a manager i know i always try and tell my employees hey thank you for doing this thank you for rolling silverware thank you for grading your tables in a timely manner and just kind of recognize what they're doing and at least acknowledge that they are doing good because I feel like a lot of my other managers, um, they're very, they focus on the negative versus I always liked positive reinforcement. I liked, I liked people telling me, Hey, you're doing a good job. Hey, I appreciate you for doing this. I appreciate whatever else. And I feel like not everybody gives that to either their coworkers or even to their staff that I feel like can make people do a better job just because you're telling them that you did a good job. Mm -hmm. So, I think that comes I think, from experience and that's kind of a leadership skill that um, I don't know that you have to build and that kind of sets a leader apart from just a, a employee or a worker is the ability to really seek out or find the positive things and talk about them and reinforce people. Um, I think that's a lot of what sets a successful leader apart from um, either a leader who is probably going to fail if they're only talking about the negative or just an employee who's because it is easier to focus on the negative and things that are going wrong and pick apart, um, you know, the things that aren't right or that could be done differently. Um, and I actually shared, I don't remember if it was this class or somewhere else I was talking about coming to the table with a problem, um, excuse my language, but is just bitching. Um, mm -hmm. But coming to the table with, here's a problem and here's what I think we could do about it or some solutions or just offering help. What can I do to help fix the problem uh, is more 
efficient and teamwork oriented and helps solve the problem than just yeah. sitting, pointing out there's yeah. all the things wrong. And that's, I think, so important. And I know that Kelsey, you had started to see something, so I'll make this quick. Um, I think that's so important that, okay, if I'm doing something wrong, like my brother has a basketball coach right now. He's in an AAU basketball team, and he's got one coach that is constantly just harping on the players, harping, harping, yelling at him. But it's like, okay, if I'm doing something wrong, and even for me, like managing my general manager, he – he'll say things to be like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why are you? it's like, okay, if I'm, if I'm doing something wrong, tell me what I'm doing wrong. And then tell me a different way that I could do it or a, a better way that I could do it to fix it. Or instead of just saying, okay, you're doing this wrong, fix it. Okay. Well help me fix it. Tell me a better way that I can do it or explain to me why it's wrong. Because if it's working and it's, like getting the job done just because it's different than your opinion and the way that you do things doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. It's just different. And I feel like a lot of people tend to go into situations and say, okay, you're doing this wrong. And they yell at you. Like, okay. Well, I, okay. I, I think most people want to know what they're doing wrong, but they also want to know how they can do it better. Okay. Say, for example, our ticket times in Ankeny, so I work at the Grumpy Goat, were upwards of 45 minutes to an hour when we first started. Well, we would get a lot of bad reviews because servers weren't telling their um, customers that it was going to be a long time. Well, from my serving experience, all people want to know is they, they want you to be honest with them. They want you to, they just want to know what's going on. They want to be greeted. They want to be talked to. They just want to know what's going on. And I'd had a couple servers that were constantly, it was the same people that I was always having to go talk to their tables. I was always having to like discount their food and whatever else. So one of them, I just said, Hey, I just letting you know, I go, I asked her, I go, Jana, do you talk to the, like your tables and let them know that we're on a long wait for food. And she goes, yeah. I go, okay. Wh what do you say? What? What do you say to them? She goes, well, I tell them it'll be a little bit. And I go, okay, well, from my experience, a little bit is subjective. It's five minutes, it's 25 minutes, it's an hour. It's, it's all different for all of us. So I go, don't, don't sugarcoat it. I go, but this is, when I was serving, this is what I would say. Go up, introduce yourself before you get any sort of orders, drinks or anything. Say, hey, we are on about a 45 minute wait after we order food. If you'd like to stay and hang out <clears throat> and drink while after we get your food in, I would love that. But you're not going to upset me. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you want to leave and go somewhere else. And 98% of tables are just fine with it. And they'll thank you. Some of them, yeah, will leave because they have other things to do. But at least you are telling them that. And after that night, she hasn't had any issues. She, she's super excited and like there will be nights that I go to check her out and she's like I didn't have any comps today and it's like okay that's mm -hmm. awesome I'm glad that we can evoke that response from you instead of being upset because you have to get most of it comps so mm -hmm. I agree with that that's a good point um one thing I just wanted to touch on was he asks in here what did it cost you to do so like saying nice things, giving positive feedback. Like, I think that's a good, something to think about, not just in every group situation, but even just one-on-one -on -one or with your husband or your boyfriend or your family or your kids. Like, positive reinforcement or giving someone a compliment, like, always makes someone feel good. Like, even if they're like, oh, no, you know, like if someone says, I like your dress, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I got it for $5. You know, like, even though you're trying to downplay it, inside it still makes you feel good. Like, they're recognizing me. They're recognizing a good quality or something, you know, nice. So it doesn't cost anything to do that. And I think it makes the atmosphere so much better, especially in a team experience. Like, Darren's board that she was on last night like just saying you know what that's a really good point that's a really good idea I didn't think about that you know like that makes someone say okay like I actually have a say in what's going on here like they think my thoughts and opinions are important instead of saying okay that was really dumb like I don't know why you said that you know so I think just reminding yourself constantly when interacting with other people like it's so much easier and so much better and more productive 
to be positive and give positive feedback and positive compliments rather than, like you said, constantly focus on the negative. And it doesn't cost us anything to do that. It takes two seconds out of your conversation. Just be like, oh, wow, I didn't think of that. That's a really good point or something like that. Um, so I, I, I think that is a good thing that came out of this was just it's nice to hear something positive about yourself. It's nice to hear someone recognize the things that you work hard for, the things that you do. So I think I think that's an important um, thing to take away from this. And to really seek out those opportunities because I mean they're everywhere. You just don't think of them. So again, coming with my board meeting and all the work that had to go into that this week, the um, president of the board was doing so much, and it, it was we were getting emails every five minutes about updates about what was going on with these interviews, and um, it was taking a lot of her time. And like I told you, it was a very emotionally driven situation anyway, um, with all the people involved, and so the emails that were coming back and forth were very. I mean, it's hard to tell emotion in email anyway, but I just sent her a text message because I felt like we were all in in this environment, but nobody was telling her, you know. I appreciate you doing this and I think you're doing a really good job. And she said that meant more to her than anything that had happened all week. Yeah. Um, just like really seeking out those um, situations because like I said, they're everywhere. You can do it all the time. It's just looking for the positive. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think too, in any situation, there's a way to say things like, mm -hmm. okay, you can, and I don't think that it's bad to point out the negatives all the time. I think that sometimes it's, like can be constructive and can be useful just as much as like saying the positive things can. But I also think that there's a certain way to say things and like your body language and your tone and like you can be yelling at somebody or talking sternly with somebody without being disrespectful, without doing whatever. But on the flip side, you can also be complimenting somebody and make it feel like make them feel like you don't mean it and be like, Oh, I like your dress. Or versus like, oh my gosh, I love your dress. Where did you get it? You know, the, I feel like your voice inflection and your eye contact and just getting visibly excited about something, I think can make the difference in how you say it too. So I agree. Well, cool. All right. What else does it say? Um, I think that's really it, isn't it? We just have to write our papers. Oh, yeah. So kind of what we talked about at the end is going to go in our reflection paper. Log any insights and include in your personal reflection. Assignment number four. As a, as team members, record, save all of your responses on your own personal success analysis worksheet and post it in the Dropbox. Team captains must also make sure that this. Okay, so I recorded this and I'll post that in the link Dropbox and then the reflection paper. So I think we're done. Cool. All right. Perfect. Thank you, ladies, for that yesterday. I know that we had planned to do it yesterday, but thank you for being willing to do it this morning. Yep. This worked out perfect. I think we have another one coming up like next week, week yeah. after. So we okay. may want to start looking ahead then to that too. Mm -hmm. Good plan. Cool. That one out. Yep. yep. Cool. That's good. Well, why do we have each other's phone numbers now? Because those freaking emails. Yes. I hate. I know. I'm like, God, I, at least with the text, I can like look at it versus email. It's like, you got to scroll through all of them. It's like, holy cow. So I'm glad that you guys were like, and I know Darren, last time you're like, oh, here's our phone number. And then I think we just kind of like overlooked it. Yeah, yeah. No, it looks a lot better. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. All right. All right. Have a good all right. week. You too. Have Bye. a good day. Bye.